and um, construction loans and also pulling together funds from friends and family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, um, so tell me about regarding the summer, the summer and the apprenticeship. So what, what are your goals? And so I guess the one of the major questions is how, how much time you can, you can commit to that. Um, since that's the one point you brought up in your, in your video. Tell me more. So what, what's your availability and, and uh, your specific goals? Sure. Uh, so it turns out that I need to go back to uh, Arizona to take care of some stuff in the next week or so, just sooner than I was expecting. And then I was wanting to come back to Missouri and Factor E Farm in July um, to build the CEB and learn those skills. That's definitely the, the skills that I'm most excited about. But I know that the apprenticeship is I know, part of a more general curriculum where also there's a, you know, there's giving back or working on the farm like any kind of operation definitely requires uh, people to give work. I don't know if I can give the whole six months and I'm also concerned, like I have some chronic health challenges that uh, make me sort of like tired and hard to focus. So I do have some concerns about being able to participate at the same um, standard as everyone else or that, you know, that I might've done a few years ago. Um, just, you know, some human limits. And I definitely would like to be there physically and maybe arrange some like alternative ways of meeting the requirements and, and helping out. I don't know if I could do the, the daily schedule that's posted. That, that would be quite ambitious for me. I'll do my best. And I would like to uh, leave in August to take care of the land and then come back in September for the seed build and um, after that, I become more free. Like as long as I can be away for August, uh, I think that's uh, sufficient to get things started on the land. I I want to run a composting operation, so I think a month would be enough to get the substantial amounts of, of compost that I would like to get started um, for the rest of the summer, and then I'd come back for September, October, and then November. I would like to leave and have Thanksgiving uh, back in Arizona. Um, so, so yeah, that's what I was imagining, and I, I'm definitely, you know, flexible. I'd like to negotiate to what makes sense and what is beneficial for open source ecology as well. Tell me what you understand as a daily schedule, so we're on the same page. Uh, you said you, you couldn't really meet that. It might be difficult. Uh, what do you understand as a daily schedule? Uh, sure. The daily schedule, I, I think I read, was, you know, waking up and starting work around 8 or 9, and uh, you know, taking a break at lunch and then stopping before dinner time, probably like five or six. And then you know, people maybe still continuing to uh, talk and socialize and do evening work if necessary. Or, or you know, if we're behind schedule, which you know can happen because these schedules are uh, ambitious. Then you know, some work can continue in the evening as people are able. So that's my rough understanding. Yeah, and I could be wrong, but I'll double check again. So. The morning is, uh, just just to clarify that, so the morning is design, design, build, design uh, basically of technology primitives that, that apply to everything from machines to houses. But that's all, yeah. uh, the, the morning is design part, so it's not, not fatiguing work, it's sitting on ass work on a computer. Sure. Um, so that's the design part. And then 1 p.m. to 1 to 5, uh, so four hours of builds, yeah. And then that's, if you do that for four, there's four days of that actually, four or five, like four four days is design. We design things that we're gonna build, like innovation. Like uh, say we're uh, building a brick press, the, the design session might be, it might be just going through the CAD since we kind of have that and we probably might say, oh, let's just leave it at exactly where it is. We uh, go through the build. But, but a lot of times it'll be like making, like if we're building a tractor, you know, there's design work there. So we'd definitely be on a computer and, and getting ready the stuff that we're going to build and iter iterative, basically have an ability to do their CNC torch, their CNC, there's 3D printing. So we're sitting designing that kind of stuff and rapidly prototyping in afternoons to innovate and continue moving all the technology forward towards product release. Um, but yeah, and then the, the Fridays would be builds, like for example, the build of the, the CEB workshop. So we build the brick press and then we build the workshop with it. So that would be like infrastructure building days, that or cabins. Uh, we might we might try to do some CEB cabins if we, if we've got the energy. I would love that. that. Um, yeah. yeah. 
it's a possibility depending on of course schedule and how people are how how we're progressing but it's really about uh, if we can really click and and learn and be effective we could do so much and still we're we're exploring who else is joining the team so so people are still applying so we'll see how many people we have and that will basically the numbers will tell us how many how, how much we can do um yeah do you have any other questions about any questions about how how it works or anything else because there was the friday was the infrastructure building saturday was focused on global collaboration how do we develop collaborative protocols to involve the whole world including seeding incentive challenges because we want to do this 3d printer incentive challenge where uh, we go to the real capacity to recycle take trash plastic and to make it um, print with it rubber tractors or the real panels for the CD call, like I mean, that that won't solve housing because there's an amount of plastic that's in the waste streams could probably provide I don't know maybe one to five percent of the housing need. <laughs> so it's not just by volume wise. We're talking about tons and tons of it because a house weighs like you know a hundred thousand pounds. So there's just not enough plastic in the waste stream. But it could be a way to actually do quality building material stuff like trim or or rot resistant lumber's plastic lumber's and things like that. Uh, it's definitely um, it could be a cost reducer in, in the whole project. Yeah. yeah, I haven't even considered that possibility. I don't think that it's written about anywhere. So this is the first time I'm hearing about it from you. Is that you could use uh, plastic yeah. waste to print building materials? So. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's a pretty big deal. We're, we're we're planning on doing an incentive challenge where you do a big prize and. And the thing is that all of us on the Saturdays and the Global Collaboration Days would be putting together that campaign. So a, a serious campaign, we're looking at like a 100 or 200K reward um, mm -hmm. for that. And um, making that, so, like really focusing on that as, hey, this can actually cause some traction. Here's, here's getting rid of the plastic waste issue and solving some housing issues at the same time. So I think that's a big, big deal. That's I think that's pretty important. That would be a great synergy as well. Yeah, yeah um, because we've got the technology to do it with the universal access and the universal controllers for CNC controls, larger printers, the scalability of our techniques. That's it's right up our alley. So it's almost low hanging Excuse fruit. Me. Yeah. But um, beyond that, so any questions on w what this would look like still or? Uh, no, that was, uh, I guess, like much more helpful and. Mm -hmm. Uh, I uh, I plan to drive down um, mm -hmm. from Detroit or mm -hmm. back from Arizona. So I have a car, and uh, I've slept in the car before. I like have friends who do Prius car camping, and so if that's okay to do on the property, um, that probably would be my uh, preference. And I um, because I make some money teaching online, I might um, con continue doing some of that, and then the payment for the apprenticeship would be, it's a lot upfront for me, so if it's okay, uh, I was wondering if there could be like some kind of payment plan. You know, I registered for the, the option where there was a loan and the smallest amount, but I was wondering if there's, um, uh, I may not be able to stay um, from the months afterwards to pay it back, but I can sort of pay it um, as, uh, as I earn the money um, throughout the uh, apprenticeship, if that makes sense. Right, so you see yourself going off to your projects in Detroit or, or in Arizona uh, afterwards? Yeah, and then, um, yeah, I think like needing, needing to make time in August is, uh, is sort of my request um, to be gone. And then like afterwards in December, um, the, the land project in Arizona, which you know, I hope to be at least you know, half as cool as, a, as Factory Farm, in a number of years, uh, <laughs> it was designed to be like a place to be in December that would uh, is somewhat warmer than being in Detroit. Uh, so that, or that's, that's the idea. From, or <laughs> Missouri, yeah. I, I, I know how cold it gets, but if it's anything like Oklahoma, where my parents are, then it's, it gets pretty icy. So. Right. That's interesting. Would you see yourself like if say we're, we've got house house build clients? Would you see yourself uh, getting on a party bus and building one of those in a week or two with us afterwards? Uh, cause yes. That, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's we're expecting to have house sales <laughs> because we've got a decent product, and yeah. And afterwards, um, the idea is there. Depending on how efficient we get, we can probably pay people between twenty-five to fifty bucks an hour, and depending on what 
what the um, well it depends on the client depends on the level of training of the student like if you if you're ambitious that you can take on much more than just build a role like minimum would be to learn how to build but also there's the organizational side and an executive side like if you want to organize builds uh, say say we've got a client even in Detroit can we hire you yeah, to do that or something or collaborate on it somehow so so depending on which track you go to there's different revenue potential from that and just in terms of general enterprise infrastructure yeah yeah this is all to be developed but I think the thing I want to I want to stress is how well we collaborate and develop the product in all its detail um, that determines how much we can do with it afterwards and that's the kind of a uh, mindset I want to you know get into everybody it's like we don't have the product it's like yeah we've got it like you know like 95 percent but that's like marginal or like however good it is the way that this can actually scale is if it becomes the best and and we deliver on a promise of open source collaboration so imagine this we've got a full house designer that allows us to do all kinds of version of this in no time uh, then we develop the CED version of it keep iterating on the systems end up with a closed loop water system with aqu aquaponic greenhouse and crazy stuff like that that's what we got to be thinking about um, in terms of if you want to take over <laughs> take over the world with open source know-how and and dissemination of uh, open enterprise across the world so so it's really um, we have this chance uh, for us to say okay we're open and we're so open to the outside world to help us collaborate but we're here to solve problems because we are collaborating openly so it's, it's about expanding our consciousness to say okay we're thinking about bigger problems uh, but I, I want to invite everybody in a program to, to think that way that um, and think of it as we're all collaborating on an enterprise um, where we don't have it yet or we do you can say and, and you know we can make a living you know eke out a living with it but how do we get to excellence you know excellence and this product being really significant and allowing the open source community to actually grow because anyone for example could take it on and use it as a revenue stream for, to fund other work that's that's the kind of idea we're embodying in it sure no i mean i i feel very aligned with those values i probably see myself more as a organizer entrepreneur than you know i probably wouldn't be the person who's the best bricklayer although i'll do my best to um get good at it uh, as well and i'm not expecting yeah. a finished uh product although i know what i've seen posted is definitely well organized and f furthest ahead of you know any other open source open building effort that i've seen so um yeah, no, I'm totally with it. I would like to the, the my land project to sort of be like a sister community um, and to you know have a place where you know we could duplicate a, a micro tractor or, or other builds or yeah help refine those as well. So yeah, and if you talk about organizing, yeah, it's about learning the things that have worked for us and then seeing how in enterprise sessions because we do have two 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 times a week, the first two months and then every every day during the summer X starting September October November that's every day we do the enterprise development work but um, that's really about yeah how do you replicate well starting with a very concrete operation on a on a CD go home but then also how does that relate to replicating the larger operation too how do we use those tools to build OSC campuses elsewhere so that yeah i mean i could see if you're if you see yourself as an organizer that could be i think the, the enterprise development part could be extremely valuable and you can probably contribute to that because it's all it's, it's about developing uh, very focused things that actually work and, and can move forward economically and then and then towards um, significant replication yeah yeah would i be able to attend uh, sort of the necessary parts of the summer X. Like, um, if I come for the apprenticeship, uh, I understand it includes some parts of the summer X, but maybe not all the parts. And that part is still a little unclear to me. Right. There's see, there's a lot of stuff in the summer X that's be besides the house. There's the house, the aquaponic greenhouse. There's tractor, three printer. That's all pretty much related. Then we go into like a month or two of machines but but the idea there was that we we somewhat have two parallel tracks one is the summer x for the participants 
that sign up for that explicitly and then in parallel the builder track where if we need to be building the CD co homes and practicing on that refining it uh, possibly building for a client we would decide as as we go with that but we do have that opportunity to kind of take two tracks during that time so we have the design lessons on the machines and the bigger program but also uh, so so that gets going and then another classroom we're here oh, okay now let's talk about the cd go home uh, depending on what the biggest needs are there so we'll kind of play it by ear exactly how we divide the time between machines and playing house development i mean the, each each of those <laughs> each is like full-time jobs for many people uh you know it's more than we can handle but we'll see how we best divide sure. the time in the time that we have uh, yeah um, so practical question like what what happens there that there are some parts directly related like the brick press and uh, which is October um, there's of course the CD go home aquapana greenhouse so you definitely want to be there for those the soul, soul mixer um, possibly the tractor but if you if you have to go away for some time that that will work too but also I mean that's it will limit how much you can learn in terms of the hands-on um, I would definitely encourage if you if you remote then you can completely participate in the design part of it too because it's half design and half build so you'll get at least 50 percent remote now you will also get a 3d printer so you can prototype little things too and help us actually develop parts and there's a lot you can do with it once you get the skills of how to use one um, so there uh, you can do between like 50 to 75 percent remote even minus minus the big the big things minus the big bulls, but you can definitely prototype parts design and prototype parts um yeah well i want to be there as much as possible again I, i'd say that like august is probably um, the time where i would want to be uh, away and then i i'll work on fast internet access where i am just so i can stay remotely mm -hmm. uh, i i am more effective when i'm in person just because you know I, there are so many virtual conferences now with quarantine and i almost never pay good quality attention or get the most out of them because I'm in my bedroom yeah. or whatever like uh and so I definitely I want to be in person in Missouri as much as possible uh, because yeah. I know myself and I wouldn't participate as much as if I weren't there so. yeah and you, you've already seemed to have demonstrated the ability to work completely openly so you're talking about a uh, for the Detroit work and it sounds like everything that you're doing it's like okay this is for the public public benefit is that is that correct Yes. Or is there any um, proprietary? Sorry. Is there any attraction of proprietary in your program? <laughs> uh, no, there's there's not. I mean, I would love to help anyone to continue. If someone were already doing this in Detroit, you know, I would volunteer right. and invest with with them. But no one is. I'm kind of creating what I would wish had existed. Exactly. And uh, uh, I I talked to my partner, and there is some concern because uh, the situation, economic situation, is that the people who need affordable housing. Are usually in poorer neighborhoods and if you sort of move in uh disrespectfully or carelessly to develop like new housing or if people see that you have like a lot of resources before you put it into building materials that uh you know there's like short-term stealing of building materials for example that's like that could be a problem and so if you're very transparent about your uh finances and the your building plans or something, you know, people see a lot of building activity, they'll be like, oh, these people have resources and like, let's go take their copper pipe or whatever. And um, so I'm still in talks about what the right level of transparency is there. I would like to be as transparent as possible and I'm trying to find the right trade off of, you know, maybe where um, we have a closed discussion for a month or two while we're doing the most. Um, the work is vulnerable, like vulnerable to theft, vulnerable to break in these housing projects, and then we open up. We're like more open about everything, including finances, uh, afterwards after the the money has been invested in the house. That that was sort of the discussion. Maybe that's not what you meant by closed source. I, no, I meant I mean, more of like a uh, open governance. Yeah, I yeah. mean transparency uh, for us would occur on the enterprise level too. There's definitely some sensitivity, sure. but it seems like, uh, are you from Detroit? Were you born there or like grew up there? Or? Uh, no, I've only lived here since October. Uh, my friend Adrian, my business partner, has been here for three years. He owns a house that I'm in right now. So he kind of inspired me to come here. And uh, it seemed like the area where they would be receptive to a seed home because 
Um, yeah, because there's a lot of empty land, and also it's, it's inexpensively priced. That's right. That's <laughs> that's right. But I mean, to me, it sounds like you know the easy thing to say is well, just involve the people in the community, and of course, there's barriers to that. Um, but that would have to work if if you if we find a way to now start training local people, and it's unfortunately like the, the you know the. Um, it's a it's a hard thing it's like the as if the you know the elite people uh like like ourselves you know we're s somewhat privileged to be a be in a position to actually think about these problems um but ultimately that kind of thinking i mean it's already in a community we, we gotta make that come to life so that that energy is coming from the community and we're not interlopers because uh sure I, mean, I can you know, I can easily talk about, oh, how do we set up new OSC campuses on vacant land, but uh, I'm not, I did, I'm not living in, a, in an underprivileged community somewhere, though the Midwest farming land is kind of, is somewhat underprivileged. And I, I did actually, uh, my experience actually, when I first came to America, I came from Poland, I did live in Patterson, which is, uh, New Jersey, Patterson, New Jersey, which was like, at that time, Newark was all graffiti written. Now it got all cl cleaned up, but that was where I grew up initially. And uh, first year in Patterson, New Jersey. So my first, uh, you know, I went to an all-black school initially. So I was I was the minority, <laughs> the feral migrant in the community. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I, but, that's uh, that's a no. I mean, I understand that's actually a really great experience to have in your mind to have that oh, flipped. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I'm definitely sensitized from, okay, here's the gro growing up in Poland, which was behind the Iron Curtain and pretty sad state of affairs, and then kind of coming to the ghetto in the U.S. and then um, getting beyond, you know, my life. You know, t I can comfortably talk about, oh, yeah, you know, what does it take to make a better world right now? Because I have that opportunity to, to think like that. But yeah, anyway, that's a, that's much bigger. But the big, yeah, you're talking about solving the big issue. It's like, okay, how do we bring about some more equality and opportunity? But that's that's central to us. It's like not not only creating the the possibility, well, the possible vision of a possibility, but then the real opportunity. So seed home. I mean, okay, what's the revenue model for for getting people you know involved right off in in uh, Detroit? school business whatever you know that's that's all entrepreneurial savvy that's that's what we got to develop um common story for the whole world you know, that working model could work and troy could could work anywhere you know yeah i i mean i'm slowly making progress it's uh you know making friends in a new, a new place and uh being careful not to sort of subsume uh someone else's struggle which you know, because I'm not black, and uh, uh, but I think you know Asian populations are going through a lot of challenges now as well. So there's there's plenty for me to like work on in solidarity. Um, I yeah, I, I have become more uh, comfortable. Yeah, making more friends since I've been here. But uh, yeah, 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 it's a process. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, so that sounds sounds pretty good. Um, Tell me a little bit, so regarding like financing for this, this thing, yeah, I mean, let's, let's, so, so are you able to say like make a first payment of the 1200 and then we can think about uh, the yes. pay, repayment plan. So, so like, you know, like a monthly thing or something or a couple, like how would you, what would work for you on your side to make that, that work, assuming that, okay, so you'd like to, um, to cover that. The reduced amount, which is sixty five hundred, through the like at the by the end of the six months, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. So um, right now, I from teaching, I make about twelve hundred a month. It's probably sorry, it's, it's not quite right. Twelve hundred every two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So I the so I, I would be on track to pay it at around well twenty four hundred minus living expenses. So you know, let's say like two thousand living frugally per month. Um, throughout the apprenticeship, and yes, yeah, so that would be my proposal. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on site we cover food like that's that's part of it. So uh, there wouldn't be any cost unless unless you have other costs. Do you have? I mean, do you have any big bills you got to be paying up or? Uh, no. I mean, like I'm prepared to live in my car and uh, live pretty frugally if if food is taken care of. You know, I might go into town for yeah, yeah. food every once in a while, grocery shopping, or to help with the community grocery shopping. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so. Yeah, if we could do that, that would be awesome. So maybe, maybe think about that. So, so uh, over the, so, uh, yeah, I mean, so I don't see any reservations of why you shouldn't uh, be part of the program. Uh, I was impressed that you already took the CD Go Home design and you built from the modules that we had and you put that. Um, did you actually use Sweet Home in there? Yeah, well, very rough copy and paste. Like I right, actually right. didn't do very, very much to it. I look forward to designing even more but yeah, um, yeah. but you, you you made it accessible and so I, I definitely which, yeah because which you put was, it out there yeah well I must say that's the first that anyone ever took that to actually build upon it no I mean that's the thing it's like we've got all this material out there and people uh, it's hard for people to, to access it so I'm glad you did that it was a really nice surprise because it's like wow someone actually took it and did something with it awesome oh yeah it's worth yeah it's billions or yeah. trillions but Nobody knows yet. Yeah. <laughs> first, yeah, the first of many. Great. I'm sure we we'd love to document our experience and let people know how like yeah what software you need and yeah yeah absolutely that's that was the the idea of the Saturdays the global collaboration days where we document what we do and make it uh, make rapid learning instructional so people can get right on this like right now with very basic materials we can pretty much teach people how to design a house. Uh, from A to Z. I mean, it takes a little bit of learning, but it's not like you got to get four years of, uh, of an architecture degree. There's things we have simplified. We kind of reduced the set to a construction set Lego-like approach, which is very approachable. And with the part libraries, people like yourself, you already took the parts and made stuff that, I mean, what you already did is actually buildable because the modules themselves are buildable. You know, so it's not like BS design, like somebody would just throw up some, some crazy design. It's, it's actually buildable stuff. We actually know how to build it so that's cool um, all right so let's let's say this um, definitely want to have you in the program um, and let's see how we we can so let's I'll send you an agreement and, and based on what we talked about uh, so see if you like it there's the Aussie social contract which is how we roll in terms of collaboration uh, which is uh, kind of a uh, take a look at that uh, beyond that I mean I don't have I don't particularly have any reservations um, about this, do you do you have any other questions? Any other reservations we can address or anything? Or uh, I think uh, th throughout the program, I might sort of like uh, maybe like disappear to to rest or sleep at some point if I'm not able to like work safely. I think I have some concerns about. If I were to operate heavy machinery and I was not feeling up to it, I might just like excuse myself. And uh, uh, for you know, I don't want anyone to take that personally. It's just uh, I sort of reserve the right that if I feel like it's unsafe, I might excuse myself. So, and that's a good point about fatigue because fatigue is the thing. Like things are fine when we are full of energy and aware, but the thing about uh, dangerous work environments or working with heavy things is that you want to make sure you're not getting to the point of fatigue that you're losing, starting to lose attention. So completely can respect that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, uh, I think that's the, yeah, I feel great. Uh, I'm yeah. happy to be part of the organization, and thank you for the, the chat. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, so yeah, I'll send you an agreement based on what we talked about. We can work out some of the details, uh, um, you know, say the payment stuff and any other details about timing and, when you you're here and not, uh, so we just have good know what to expect and all that. Other than that, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. What what what's the relationship of your partner? Is he going to be staying in um, during that time in Detroit, or what's he do for a living? Is that is he working on this full time or anything? Or uh, no, for him it's uh, he has an app. He works on a okay. uh, mapping app and mm -hmm. uh yeah he has a kind of a busy life uh in detroit okay. so he definitely supports the projects i'd be in communication with him mm -hmm. we meet once a week and often more but he wouldn't be sort of in person with me i'm i'm coming down to be that part of the project okay okay sounds yeah. good 
Sounds good. Yeah. So I'll send you an offer and agreement uh, and we can take a look at it and just iron out the details and we'll go from there. Otherwise, look forward to having you. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. I'm glad to be part of it and I look forward to, to being there soon. Okay. Thanks, Paul. And, and once again, congratulations on on the first ever fork of the CD Go Home that you're doing. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. I'll try and publish it soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.